one hook. I don't really have anywhere to put the other side. But like you get the idea. You know what it is. You know what it's here for. <laughs> Hi friends, my name is Al or Lil Starnard and welcome to today's episode of It's Pride. <laughs> I am super excited about today's video. One, uh, it's Pride. First video of Pride, so that's fun. Two, we're continuing the Make It Gay series, which is always super exciting. But three, we have a special guest featured in this video. You might have heard there was a song playing in the beginning that was Flowers by Amori. Amori is a queer musician who reached out to me on Instagram and said that she had this song that she would love for me to use in a video. And of course, you know, I listened to it and it was amazing. So I was like, yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> like I said, the song is called Flowers. Uh, it's about queer love, so it fits the theme for today. Everything will be linked down below, Amori's socials and where you can go listen to the video. So make sure you go check her out, give her some love and listen to her song. It's genuinely so good. And I am just so appreciative that she's letting me use it. You'll also see some other links down there. Those are some other small queer artists that I'll be shouting out at the end of the video who you should also check out. But for now, I'm genuinely excited about this Make It Gay. We're doing Cupid and Psyche. Um, I'm really excited about it. It's big, so I'm kind of nervous, but let's, let's go. Let's go make it gay. So before I even started, I looked at the original and like the real estate there. <laughs> there are specific things that I look for in original pieces that make them easier to make gay. So, you know, I look for exposed chests, open poses that will give me room for clothing, anatomy, detail. Um, usually I'm looking for like romantic tension. Um, I usually want both or at least one face to be as visible as possible. Basically, I'm looking for real estate that will allow me to make indicators that something gay is going on. And for this piece, both characters are basically nude, so there's plenty of space for me to change things up, and it's, it's basically a blank slate. At first, I was a bit hesitant to go with this piece because I've, I've been avoiding outright nudity up until this point, but I did some research on YouTube's nudity policies, and it's allowed for artistic purposes. So as long as it's not like overtly sexual, I think, like, I think we're fine. I think this is fine, and if not, like, I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> So I decided the nudity was worth it because I really liked the piece and I specifically liked it because, you know, it did feel like a blank slate for a make it gay. It felt like a really perfect kind of, like a lot of free range here. Um, but I knew I didn't want to just outright make it to women or to men again. I wanted it to be a bit more diverse. Uh, and so I went back to the Lay and Decker Apollo piece where I asked for feedback about representing trans people. I read through those comments on that video for like inspiration. I didn't want to do top scars because it would be my third time doing top scars. Um, and I want to do like a bit more diverse in trans rep itself, um, like different ways of showing trans people, not just top scars. I don't, I'm not trying to be like, I'm not trying to do a diversity bingo, you know what I mean? Or do every possible thing in every possible piece. Um, I just want to make sure I'm not totally discluding whole sections of the community that I love and want to represent. So that's, I'm just trying to be in general more diverse and open when I'm doing these pieces. So after some thought and a few little like comps, I figured out the kind of tweaks I wanted to do for this piece. I knew Cupid was going to be black and have an afro because in the original, he already has like that large fluffy hair that lent itself really well to being an afro so i knew i wanted to do that i also eventually decided on keeping cupid's flat chest um, without any visible scars and i moved the cloth that was covering cupid's crotch lower to show off a vagina i don't know if i can say words like that so if i say stupid embarrassing like stand in words i'm sorry bear with me i'm gonna do my best to not be cringy but i don't know what i'm allowed to say honestly <laughs> Um, and then overall, I kind of tried to give Cupid a bit more of a feminine look with jewelry and a slightly more feminine face without changing up much more of like the lean kind of masculine anatomy of the original. 
I was viewing uh, my Cupid as non-binary or intersex, but you know, I'm, I'm not gonna tell you how to perceive my art. <laughs> so if you're getting different vibes, absolutely pop off. That's totally fine. As for Psyche, I kept her feminine features and figure. Um, I was painting her as a woman, but again, you guys can interpret whatever you'd like, but I'll be using she, her for Psyche, but you know, doesn't matter. <laughs> like if you don't want Psyche to be she, her, again, pop off. I really, really wanted to keep her hair in. You guys know, I love me some long flowy hair. I love preserving like fluidity in these old pieces whenever I can, but I did intend to make her larger, like a bit fatter. Um, I don't think I pushed it far enough in my mock-ups. I was, I was picturing like rolls and stuff, but I think that kind of got lost in the painting process. But she is bigger, she's got some stretch marks, her breasts are bigger, although you can really only see the one. Um, I also wanted to give her a lot of pubic hair, which is never ever shown in these old paintings. And I don't know, pubes are like, they're, they're there, they exist. Um, and it's something I've got a lot of opinions about. And not all of which are straightforward, it's complicated, but they definitely exist. And I wanted to show that since her crotch wasn't covered, I thought it was a good opportunity. And I think it's weird that I never see pubic hair in old paintings. Were they, did they shave back then? I'm confused. So I was really happy with these decisions. I was loving the characters and I was having a lot of fun with the mock-ups, like the little comps, um, but I still didn't feel like it was overtly, <laughs> undeniably gay. Like when I do these, I want there to be clear visual indicators that this is queer. Like that's, for me, that's the point of this series. It doesn't have to be the point for other people, but for me, like that's my intention with this series. On my Apollo video, I got a lot of feedback about how I can use subtle cues. Um, it doesn't need to be obvious, which I get. Um, I like, that's true. <laughs> but for me and this series, um, like I don't want anyone to be able to ignore the queerness of these pieces. I want it to be obvious and outright and undeniable. Um, I want it to be obvious, you know? I don't want there to be queer Easter eggs hidden in these pieces uh, because the point for me is to put queer people where I want to see them. I love classic art, but I hate that it's all straight. I want to see queer people in classic art as themselves, not, you know, like hints of queer people, you know? So I want these pieces to be obvious and it, that's a whole, I mean, I had this conversation like in the Lay and Decker Apollo piece about the frust like not the frustration, but how queer people are just people. And so like, they're not, there's not always like a, like we're not stamped queer on our forehead. So that is hard, but um, I, I want these to be, I want people to feel seen and I don't want that to be like hidden. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I, I want them to be obvious, but for this one, I didn't really know what to do to make it obvious. I thought about the feedback I had gotten and about the hints that I could use, like the subtle visual indicators. And I thought, you know, maybe this is the time to try that out. Try out these subtle indicators and these like little clues and stuff. Maybe using the right colors in this piece might be my best option. Not only to make it more of my own, make it less of a direct copy, but it could be that tipping point to make the piece more like overtly queer. And so I Googled the non-binary pride flag and I was like, you know, that's maybe not the vibe for this piece. It's, it's, the colors were a little, I mean, honestly, looking back, I probably could have made it work, but I was not feeling that for this specific piece. But then I thought about the trans flag with soft pastel blue and like pink. And I was like, that would be perfect for the sky. Like that could work so, so well. And Cupid has this blue fabric around him in the original piece. I could give Psyche pink to balance out the color composition. So I would have like pink sky peeking through on top and then Psyche's pink drapery on the bottom. And that worked out perfectly. I'm really happy with that decision. And I think that color indicator, you know, the visual cue helps to make it more original, but I think it does really help to make the piece feel more queer, especially considering the figures themselves might be a bit vague in terms of queer or not to the untrained eye. So overall, I'm really happy with those design decisions. And I definitely want to keep thinking about those little cues and hints that I can add to like enhance pieces in the future. I don't want to rely on them. I don't want those to be like the only things that are, are queer about a piece, but I think it could help pieces feel more complete and more mine in the future. So that's cool. As for the art process itself, um, I went with something pretty big for something that isn't canvas. Uh, at least this is big for me. The painting itself is 11, 0.25 inches by 18.75 inches, which that's, you know, that's big. Uh, it was, it was scary. I'm not going to lie. I used the grid method for the sketch because doing something big always throws me off in the sketch. Um, it's, it just does. It really messes with me. And I decided to combine watercolor and gouache. In, in hindsight, the watercolor was frankly unnecessary. However, there was a reason I used it. First of all, um, uh, the idea of having to cover that much paper and gouache absolutely terrified me. I didn't want to use up all of my paint for one piece. Um, it just seemed hard. It seemed like a lot of work. It seemed like it would take a really long time. I don't know. It seemed scary. 
I needed like a first step to kind of get me warmed up before using the gouache. Uh, so I used watercolor as a base and I'm glad I did because you know, I didn't do like a pink wash or anything that I normally do with gouache. So there was no underpainting. So if I went straight in with gouache, I would have had to be extra careful about full coverage and making sure like white paper wasn't showing through anywhere. But instead I had the watercolor underneath to act as the underpainting. And again, it was just a really good mental warm up to get me ready to use all that gouache on that huge piece of paper, which is something I haven't done before. Now let's get into some art history. So this painting is called Cupid and Psyche or Cupid et l'amour. Uh, it's a painting by William Adolphe Bougereau, completed in 1899. It's done in oil on a canvas measuring 79-ish by 45-ish inches. I'm gonna call Monsieur Bougereau William, so I don't have to keep embarrassing myself with my very bad French accent. William was born in November 1825, died in August of 1905. I can almost guarantee that if you like classic art, you've seen at least one of his pieces. If you Google his name and like artwork, you will definitely recognize his work. It's very distinctive. It looks very of the time, um, but there's something in the faces and eyes that is so very him. And he definitely has like a color palette as well. William showed a real knack for art from a really young age and was allowed to pursue that instead of the family business. And apparently he used to design like jam labels for pocket money when he was young, which I thought that was cute. His art education was considered academic, which focused a lot on mythology and history, which you can really see like shaped his entire career for the rest of his life. Um, he also was really heavily inspired by Raphael and oftentimes like copied his approach to pieces and did quite a few master copies of his work. He was hugely successful in his time. People loved his stuff. He was super well known and honored in the academy. After his wife died when he was pretty old, he he did marry his younger student, but he also used like his power and influence in the academy and the art community to open up a lot of French art institutions to women for the first time. So that's, that's cool. Kind of evens out, maybe a little bit. He painted over 800 paintings, which, oh my God. Um, and he was quoted saying, each day I go to my studio full of joy. In the evening when obliged to stop because of darkness, I can scarcely wait for the next morning to come. If I cannot give myself to my dear painting, I am miserable. And like I said, he was really well loved in the art community um, and that didn't stop until the impressionist movement really started taking over after the 1920s and stuff and his stuff just fell out of style. As for the specific painting, there isn't much to break down or analyze here. I will say William was obsessed with Cupid and Psyche and painted many depictions of this scene, similar scenes, different scenes, anything and everything. Um, I mean, he's painted 800 paintings, so he probably literally has painted everything, but oh my gosh, he's painted a lot of Cupid and a lot of Psyche and a lot of them together. <laughs> He had so many paintings in general and a lot of paintings with similar or the same names. So this one was kind of hard to research. There's not too much information about this specific painting or like this series of Cupid and Psyche paintings. I'm not even fully sure on where it's displayed at. I've seen a couple of different places listed, none of which I could for sure confirm, uh, but I think it might be at the Tasmanian Museum and Art Gallery, maybe, I think. Anyways, this painting obviously depicts Cupid or Eros, Eros? 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 <laughs> and Psyche, based on their story in Greek mythology. Cupid is the god of erotic love and affection, and Psyche is the goddess of the soul. Basically, the story goes that Psyche, born immortal, was so beautiful that her admirers neglected Aphrodite in her favor, and in her jealousy, Aphrodite instructed her son, Cupid, to strike Psyche with one of his darts to make her fall in love with something hideously ugly, because apparently that would be good revenge. I don't know. But instead, he scratches himself with the dart. Um, Unclear if it was purposeful or not, different myth like sources say different things, uh, but he falls in love with Psyche himself. Psyche's parents ask Apollo, the god of prophecy, like, hey, when is she gonna get married and have kids? And he's like, oop, sorry, bestie, she's gonna marry a monster and give you a dragon grandbaby. So maybe just leave her on top of a mountain. Maybe that'll solve your problem. So they do, they leave her on top of a mountain, but the west wind feels bad for her and carries her off to Cupid's little castle in the sky, which is super decked out, very pretty. <laughs> and then it gets messy and complicated, you know, Greek mythology, basic Greek mythology stuff from there on. So we'll end the story at that point. <laughs> I think Cupid also saves her from the underworld at some point, um, but I don't think that's what this painting depicts because William has another painting that is that specific scene. So I don't know, as far as I can tell, based on what information I could find, this painting is most likely depicting Cupid saving Psyche from the mountain instead of the west wind saving Psyche. They are very clearly in love. She's swooning, he's carrying her off and looking at her with tenderness. Um, some tellings of the myth say that Psyche is also hit with the dart. So they're like in both in love with each other because of the dart, I, it, unclear, I don't know. 
Greek mythology is messy. Besides that, frankly, I couldn't find much else about the painting. I don't think there's too much symbolism in this piece or anything under the surface to look for. There's just kind of a general feeling of eroticism in this piece because, you know, it's Cupid. That's kind of what he does. So I guess even if I had researched this piece before doing it, I don't think it would have influenced my choices all that much because I this provided no meaty information about the painting. Also heads up that all of the sources for the information will be down, like linked down below. So if you wanna check out uh, William or about Cupid and Psyche, you could click those links and do some research yourself. Anyways, I'm really happy with how this piece turned out. I definitely lost some of the things I was really excited about. Cupid's face um, and the silhouette of their body. Psyche's size was minimized a bit, but overall, I really, really love how it came out, especially the sky and the clouds. I think I've only ever painted clouds like once or twice, and it was always very quick because I knew I would be bad at it, so I didn't try very hard. So I was a bit worried about doing the clouds because, you know, the whole background is clouds, and it was a big background. Uh, so the fact that they turned out like good and like pretty makes me very, very happy. And I like how much is different with this piece. It feels a bit more like my own rather than just an exact copy of the original with like a different hairstyle, you know? And I had a great time doing it. Um, it was a much easier and faster process than I expected. I thought it was going to be like a two or three day thing, but I got it done in one day. So that was really nice. Anyways, I hope you guys are looking forward to Pride. I hope this was maybe a nice way to kick it off. Another make it gay for the books. And also gentle reminder that if you can't celebrate for whatever reason, if you're not out, if you're questioning, if you're confused, if you're not in a safe environment, I hope that, you know, everything is okay for you. Know that we love you. The queer community loves you. Um, and I hope everyone has a safe, happy pride. Before we wrap it up, I wanna take the time to shout out some other queer artists. I plan on doing this at the end of all my videos for June, featuring some other artists that you can check out and support during pride month, hopefully onwards, but I'm doing it during pride month. <laughs> So if you're in search of some small queer artists to support or make friends with or buy from, look no further. Do not fall victim to rainbow capitalism and buy from small businesses instead. Make sure to check out these artists that are popping up on screen. All their links will be down below as well. And so will Amori's song Flowers, which again, go check out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had a good time. I know I did. I genuinely really enjoyed the whole process of this video and this piece. Thank you for joining me. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Let me know what other classic pieces of art you'd like to see me make gay. Okay, all right. Go eat some rice, read a book, and go do some art. <laughs>